Hello guys, welcome to the EZTV Presents Track View, another episode. I'm Saad Mujumdar with you today. Um, so in this video, I'll show you guys how you can um, create a Active Directory user, um, Active Directory groups, what are the different types of groups. Uh, so all those things I'll show you uh, practically. So let's get started. Uh, I'll First, I'm gonna show you my Active Directory. All right. Let's make sure, just confirm. I'm sharing the right screen. This is my screen number two. All right. So this is my Active Directory. Uh, I'm going to show you from the beginning. So what you find after you install the Active Directory, it will, uh, you need to go to the server manager and from the server manager, there will be some tools gonna create automatically, which I'll show you shortly. So after you install or configure the Active Directory, then restart the server and go to the server manager, go tools, and then, and then you're gonna see here, activity administrative center, activity domain and trust, activity lightweight directory services, setup wizard, activity model for PowerShell, activity site and services, activity users and computers. So active directory users and computers, this is the very, very, very important. Active directory users and computers this is very, very important. Anyway, uh, so Active Directory users and computers is very, very important because most of the time, whenever you work with users, groups, computers, you have to go these options. So just click here, then it's gonna open a new window here. All right, so it's open. Actually, it's gonna it's open like this way, but I'm going to make it maximize it to like show you the full screen. So. What we are able to see here. All right, so this is my domain, right? This is my domain, ELS.com. And under this, I have some folder. You're gonna see the computers. All these look like a folder, but Active Directory, it like in Active Directory language, it called um OU organizational unit organizational unit and also you can call as a container so you can you can have your own container you can just create right click anywhere and then go to the new options and then you can see here so I logged in in this machine as a administrator active directory domain admin so active directory when you set it up Active Directory, it will create a, a default user, which is called administrator. And also it creates a group name called administrators. So the administrators and administrator, the user administrator, Active Directory domain administrator, that user has a superpower. So I logged in now as a superpower, that's why I'm able to see everything. So what's my job? What I'm trying to show you right now? You can create a folder that means OU anytime, anywhere, whenever you want. So most of the time, you say this one is created by me. I have created a computer. Uh, I, basically, whenever you add any machine with the domain, it's gonna be joined here, computers and like this, like this. So, um, and if you go to the building, you can see under the building folder, this is also building is automatically when you set up the active directory. You see the administrators, if you, this is the group, if you double click on it and, you, and go to the member, you're gonna see here some users, right? So this administrator is also building administrator. 
administrator, building administrator. So this building administrator is the member of this administrator's group by default. And the other you see here, those are I just added. Those are I just added. So if you want to remove it, you can remove it. It's up to you, right? And this is a, like you see here. When you install Active Directory, by default, all these groups created. All these groups created by default. So it's a building, right? It's building. So security group, security group, all then also type is security group and domain local. So we're gonna learn, actually, we're gonna learn what is security group, what is the domain local, all those things you're gonna learn today. And also the description, what type of group is this? If you just expand it a little bit, you're gonna see the description of this. You're gonna see the description of this. This is administrators have complete and unrestricted access to the computer and domain. So in here, the description of which groups can do what. So easy way. So if you want to create any folder under the domain, you just need to select the domain, right click, and then you can need to go new. And then from new, you can see organizational unit. So organizational unit means create a folder, nothing else. It's pretty simple, create a folder, that's it. So if you can say, okay, click here and you can say, um, test zero one, I'm, I'll delete it, okay? And when you see you are creating a, uh, um, OU, organizational unit container and test zero one, you name it. And you see here by default, it has a check mark and says protect container from accidental direct. That means what? By default, it has a check mark. And if you created it, so you created here, right? You so you created here, right? But if now you if you try to delete it, maybe you have permissions to delete it, but you cannot delete it. Now I logged in as a super admin. Still, I will not be able to delete it. Still, I will not be able to delete it. Why? Because because what? Because I add this OU, when I created this OU, there is a protection, that's why. For to protect it from the accidental remove, right? Accidentally, if you remove it, you cannot do it. That's why it's protected. But if you want to do it, how are you gonna do that? If you go to the right click, go to the properties, and then, in here you will have options you will have but there is no option right the reason is no options if you see there is no options if you go to the properties and you are not able to see any options here to check or uncheck so then what do you need to do so there is some features missing you have to go to the view option then make sure you have an advanced feature as, as has a, selected so if you select an advanced features you're going to see here a lot more or you let's Let's do it. Click use the same groups. Now, sorry, advanced feature actually, advanced feature. So if you now it's here, I just check mark on this one. That's not a problem, but this one you should have advanced features. Now check this one, right click on it, go to the properties. Now you see it has a lot more tab, right? Attributes, editor, it's the object. So if you don't see these, that means you need to enable this one, view and advanced feature. So I believe you understand what I'm saying. So I'll go to the object, um, like this one, just this one. You need this one and, oh. okay, so, in object, you see here, protect, you, you get it, right? So uncheck it, apply it, and okay. And then you can delete it. You can oh, right click and delete it. Yes. So it's deleted, right? So this is how we can delete. But I have, I'm the super admin right now. 
I'm the super admin right now. That's why I'm able to delete it. But if any user doesn't have that privileged access to delete the OU, he or she cannot delete it. Still, if the folder has the, okay, let, let, let me show you again. First, I'm going to create a, um, organizational unit, test, and I'm going to uncheck it. So uncheck it means if I want, I can delete it. If I want, I can delete it. But some of the user cannot delete it. It doesn't have, it doesn't have, it doesn't have check mark, right? It's, that means there is no protection. So if you want, you should be able to delete it. But some of the users cannot delete it. Why? Because there is a, another thing which is called, um, oh, which is called um, access, a role-based access, like what kind of role you have. So if that user has, a role-based access for deletion, then he or she will be able to delete it. So I will have a separate video for role-based access control. But for now, you just, you just need to understand. If you want, okay, you can secure the, now, now you can have a software, now this folder, this folder or OU, or you can say container is created under the ELS. But if you want to create another subfolder under the test, how are you going to do that? Right click on it, click new, and go to the original unit. So you can say test nested OU test 01. Okay, so now I, under the test, I have another one, right? So if I want to create another one as a nested, I can say nested nested. Nested, nested, test, zero one. See? And if I want some more, what, what I have to do? Create, sorry, new, organizational unit, nested, 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 test, Zero one. This here. So this is how you can create as much as you want. You can create a OU organizational unit. But the question is why you need OU. The reason you need OU to organize your Active Directory environment. To nicely organize your activity or activity environment. So the OU inside the OU, you can have anything. Like you can have computer object, you can have user, you can have group. Is up to you how you can organize it. And you can have a multiple OU for users, you can have multiple OU for groups, you can have a multiple OU for computer object. So now I'm going to delete all of them actually. So what I have to do if I want to delete object, uncheck it, apply, okay. So now I'll be able to delete it, this one, right? I'll be able to delete this one. But if I want to delete this one, you see here properties, object. This one has no no protection, so I, I I supposed to be able to delete this one, but I cannot. Why? Because it has a, some sub container, and sub container has a protection. If you look at here, it has a protection. So let's test it out. Right click, delete. Yes, yes. What it says, object test container or other object. Are you sure you want to delete object test and all of the objects is it contains what it says you cannot because it's protected so you have to take out you have to uncheck actually object uncheck apply okay this one also you have to uh, do properties object uncheck now all three doesn't have any protection so so now if you delete the parent one, all of them will be deleted at the same time. So how we can do that? Right click on it, delete, yes. But it's gonna ask you, it has a, some um, 
Saab or you? Do you want to delete it? That's what he is, is asking. You, you, and you know, like you are trying to do all of them together, right? Say yes. And it's deleted. So this is how you can create a OU. So you're going to see here, I have a, some computer object here I added. And also under, and there is a computer object. There is a computer object. So why I created this one? Because the reason I have created this one, by default, computer gonna be comes here. So if you have a 2000 computer from different, different groups, everything gonna be the same folder, which is not looks good. And plus it's difficult for you to identify which server is belongs to what group. So if you can create something like this, customize like computer object, and then under this endpoint management and server, so endpoint management, you're gonna have a mobile management and maybe workstation, under workstation you can have Windows 10, under Windows 10 you can have maybe administrative, administration finance. So Windows 10 means if you have a workstation for your organizational, uh, your office uh, employees laptop. So maybe some some people are working for administration. So add their computer, add their computer to this OU. And if you have finance department, add them their computer in this OU. If there's the HR, stop then add their computer on this OU. Like you can just make an organize, like organize way. So you can customize as much as you want. And also this is for Windows 10. Then if your organization has a Windows 11, then have the same thing for Windows 11 here. So that means what? To nicely organize your environment, you can create a multiple uh, OU and under the OU, you can have computer object, users, groups, Right, all those, all the three things you can have. And server, same thing. If you have a different different data center, you see it. I have like the NY data center. Okay, then you can have under the NY data center, data center I have Windows 2016, 2019, 2012. And then if you expand it, you're gonna see. And then you can maybe separate with the development, production, and staging because each and every environment can have production server, staging server, and then and under this. And if you think, okay, I have the same thing for developer, for marketing, I have a different, different server, then also you can have more subfolder here. So it's up to you how you're gonna create. I already show you how to create a subfolder and subfolder, right? Folder and subfolder means in Active Directory language, it calls OU, OU and sub OU. OU means organizational unit, that's it. Now the question is, do you have the permissions to create? Yeah, that's another thing which I'll show you in another video. Like uh, to in, in here, I'll show you the, so this is how you can organize your AD. This is how you can organize your AD. So this is how you can organize your activity environment with OU, like organizational unit. So I have created a separate OU for user account, but by default, when you set it up, by default is gonna create a user OU. This is the by default one. And you're gonna see here, there will be there will be multiple, you see, uh, administrator is not here, actually I moved it. So ad, administrator, the default one should be here. I actually moved it. Um, so what you can do, you can, um, so in here, if you look at groups and users, so this is the two OU I have created just for I organize everything nicely. So you see here, user accounts and then finance, I answer the finance, I have administrative account, I have a regular account, actually it's not regular, it should be standard account, standard. Okay, I cannot rename it because, oh yeah, I can rename it. Standard account. Standard account and administrative account. So finance, IT stuff, same, and marketing and sales. So everything, let's say, standard. Standard account, right? So I'm going to just copy. So it's easy to rename all of them. Rename. 
So what does it mean? Okay. So under user account, under user account, um, so why I have a distribution standard? Because, um, Regular account, maybe you can have less privilege access and still you have more privilege access, which is role-based access you can provide, like what kind of role the person is holding based on that you can give them permission. And administrative account means you have more power. It not means that the finance administrator and the ID administrator had the same kind of uh, access, no. It can be different, but this is how you can organize nicely. So I'll show you actually, and, and in here I'm gonna share one. Um, so activity users, IT stuff. So I'm going to I'm gonna create a standard user and administrative user just to give you guys an example. So IT user 01 and AA IT user 01. What does it mean? This is the standard user and this is the administrative. That's why I use AA in the beginning of the so it, it 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 not means that you have to use a you can use anything you if your company use like say s it user zero one or s your name i say my name right so s site that means super user site or a site it 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 depends on the organization how they name it the administrative account how they mention as administrative account so with your regular account, if you add something in the beginning or in the uh, or end of the username, that it, that's how you can treat. Oh, the, those users are um, administrative account. This is how you can easily identify. So for example, like you have 50 users. So all 50 users have their own standard name, right? Like this. So in front, if you say, okay, we're gonna use for if anybody hold administrative account and that how you can define it in the beginning of their standard account if you put AA and create a second account so that will be your admin their, their administrative account so let's create it some and practically you can see it so right click on it so for example it stop i'm going to create a standard user here so click right click on any any place new and then go to the user user and then say it test i don't have any name that's why i just name it it test basically it should be a name of a people right so it test zero one it test zero one is a standard user it test zero one click next and uncheck path you can say for your organization, you don't say pass or never expert, but in, this is the this is my environment. That's I can say okay, never uh, ne pass or never expert because I don't want to re like rename again, again, like uh, reset pass or again and again. That's why I'm just check. I'm putting the check mark here. But for your organization, you shouldn't be do that because there will be a, some policy to change the password every month or every three months. It depends on your organization. Okay, anyway, and password. So the password, it also depends, like if you don't have nothing, if you're practicing at your home, home network or home lab, maybe it can accept all kinds of characters and letters or special characters, or there's no specific disease you need to have, like um, eight character or 20, nothing. But for organization, some of the reasons they have their own policy, okay. the. Standard user must be, password must be eight characters or 10 characters with mixed mode or something. They will have some policy. And for administrative user, maybe it's gonna be 14 character with a numeric number and letters and also special characters, right? That can be a policy, but anyway, it's up to you and up to your company's policy. So I'm going to create, okay. 
So I created one user. If you look at here, see, this one already created. Now I'm going to create another user. So this one I'm going to create as an administrative user. So I select an administrative account and new user. Okay. So this one will be, so it's going to be person name here. I don't know, but I don't have any person name. So that's why I'm saying a test zero one it test okay a it test zero one because this guy is belongs to it department that's what it means so it a a same the standard user username was it test zero one right and for creating a administrative account i just mentioned a in the beginning you can say s in the beginning or you can say um the person's first name a with the first name or s dot first name is up to you up to your component standard how you're going to define an administrative account so s means super account super user a account or maybe anyhow i don't know like it's up to you how you're going to define each a account click next and then so user must change password at next login means if you are creating a user for somebody else and when they log, you're going to say, okay, this is your password. You, you're going to set a password here. You're going to set a password here, uh, right? So whenever he logged in, the first time he logged in, you're going to provide him the password. Okay, hey, this is your username. This is your password. And then when he tried to log in, after he log in, immediately from the Active Directory, activity will offer him to change his password because when you created the path like users that time this one was, was check mark that's why but if you are not doing for any users then you can uncheck it it's, it's fine so from my case i'm doing password never expired and i'm putting the password All right. So, so far I created two account, AA IT test 01 and only IT test 01. So both users, if you look at here, if you look at here, if you go to the activity, uh, administrative one, go to the properties and go to the member of, it's just domain user by default. It's a domain, simple domain user. And so it's a member of, Domain user, nothing else, right? Same thing if you go here, the regular account, standard account, right click, go to the properties, account, you're gonna see the same thing. Uh, member of, see? So, what is the difference? Why I'm saying this one is an administrative account? Do you think, do you think? This one I provide, I put AA in the beginning, that's why it's administrative. And this users is under the administrative account folder, that's why it's administrative. Do you think this administrative? No, it's not administrative yet. Now, still now, this one and this one is same. Why same? Because I didn't, I, I just name it as administrator, but I didn't provide any access on it. So you have to provide the access. How are you gonna provide the access? Just go to the properties, and then member of add the add this user as a member of some other special group. So if you say okay, add m i n i s t r a t s administrators or administrator check. So administrator, you see this administrator is a ELS domain administrator. Click OK. So that means what? Now you see administrator ELS.com slash built in. Building administrator has a super power. So if you, now I add this user is a member of this, this user. So that means now this user is a, get some power. Now you can treat this one as a administrator. Now this user will be a administrator. And also there is some groups. If you make a uh, say domain admins or something, there's a groups, no domain admins. Okay, yeah. 
you see here domain admins is a groups so these users is now belongs to these groups that means now it has more power so this is how now you can delete okay or oh, this is the primary user actually apply and okay so now this one is has some you can add more power you can add more power it depends on what kind of role is playing this guy depends on this okay anyway right now these users and these users has now some difference because why now this one has power like if you go to the member of it has some it has some uh groups and users member of those users and groups in this this user right but but this user is not member of anything if you look around the member of nothing just domain user domain user means very standard nothing he can do actually so this is the difference so standard user also you can add more privilege access which is called access control role based access control so we're going to see in our another video where I, I will show you this right so now we need to discuss uh, actually so we i think we understand you how to create a users how to create a administrative users how to create a regular user and now we need to understand actually um groups so groups groups is simple pretty simple groups is pretty simple uh so for groups i have a separate um folder so if you right, right click here if you go to the new and then there is the options so organizational unit you're going to click here for user you're going to create here for groups you need to create here so if all those options is in the same place right click anywhere but you have to select dedicated place folder but anyway it, it doesn't matter say for example by mistake you created uh, groups in different ou now you want to move it it's pretty simple you just select it and just say move it where, where you want to move it just go move like this drag and drop that's it we're gonna look at it later on okay now i'm gonna show you what is the group and how you can in a group so group means group why you need to create a group that's another important thing right that's another important thing why you need to group so if i can explain you here activity groups so the reason you need to create a group for example this is a group right one one of the group this one so this is the group right so you have an application so for example you have application name you have application name say for uh, it's a monitoring tools right say monitoring monitoring application right so your whole environment you can monitor through this application so when the devil, the application owner maybe you are not the application owner maybe somebody else is setting up this one so when he's setting up he needs to be allow some people here so he allows say 50 people so do you think is easy to allow 50 people here so he allows system admins team here and this system admins has multiple groups, multiple users, multiple users, say 50 users inside of this group. So 50 users it belongs to 50 users, just an example, 50 users is belongs to this group, this group, right? So if you provide him this user account, if you provide him this user account, whoever is setting up monitoring and providing the access to monitoring tools some users in your organization maybe you have 5000 users but out of 5000 maybe the developer or application owner or application administrator wants to give access to 50 people and that 50 people is a group of this system admins group so what he did he just added on the, as a permission side he just added this group so that means right now this one has a 50 users like 50 users is belongs to this group member right so all 50 users can log into this account uh, this uh, tools applications they can just say 
www.monitoring.com or something, whatever, right? So that, those 50 users can be accessed. But later on, after one month, another 10 IT specialists join who needs to be have access on this application. So do you think you can send that 50 people account to the application owner? Hey, can you add these 10 users? Then what he need to be? He need to add separately one by one, one by one permission, right? Which is really tough. So that's why you don't need to bother the application administrator. If you know the application owner already used a group for permission, just add 10, that 10 new people on this group here. So automatically 10 new people will have access here. Not only that, maybe this group has permission on other 10 application or 20 application. So that means what? All 50 plus new 10 will have same kind of access to all other. This is why we need to have a group. This, this is the reason we need to have a group. So now we're gonna see what types of group we have and how we can create a group. So the group is pretty simple. Click, right click on your, your target folder, like target OU and, and on the <clears throat> middle, click anywhere, go to the new, and then you see your group, click group, okay. So group name, so you can say test zero one, okay. Now by default is selected global, the group scope is global and group type is security. So maximum case you're gonna deal with, the group gonna be same, security, 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 security. Why not distribution? Only exceptional case, if you are creating a group for email, like whoever is working for exchange server, and if you are creating a group for exchange server, in that case, you're gonna say, okay, distribution, distribution. Otherwise, by default, it's gonna be a security group. Otherwise, it's gonna be a security group. So you don't need to touch the type. The only thing you need to touch here, and also another thing is by default is selected global, global and security. So scope is global, type is security, and you're creating a group, right? So, so far what I, did, what I did, I did nothing. I just type a name, something group name, and then I, if I click okay, it's gonna create a global security group. So what does it mean? What does a local domain local group security means? What does the universal distribution group means? universal security group, global security group, or domain local security group means. That's what we're gonna learn. <clears throat> so I will show you, if you create okay. Oh, there's another one test already created maybe. Global. Object test zero one because the specified account already exists. You can say something else here. It doesn't matter. Okay. So groups. If you go back to the groups here, you see here, here's the group, right? It's a security group global. Security group global. So I'm going to delete actually. Delete it. Yes. So this is how I have created a domain local one for your understanding. If you double click on it, you're gonna see. If you go to the properties, see domain local and security is a domain local one. And what is the two? Same thing, right? So why I created two, I'm gonna show you something. Before I go you something, I will show you here. So now the policy of, policy of global group. So global group can be a member of a global group. Also, global group can be a member of a universal group. Also, global group can be a member of local group. You see here, global group here. And universal, universal group can be a member of local group. But local group cannot be a member of, that means what cannot be under of, universal group. Universal group cannot be under of global group. So what does it mean? So it means 
global group under if you have one global group you can join another global group under this as a nested but if you have a universal group universal group you cannot join universal group cannot join under the under the global so what does it mean global group can be joined under of this global group can be joined under under the global group can be joined under the universal group global group can be joined under the local group right local group here or here anywhere it can join but but universal group but universal group cannot join under the global group universal can be joined only in under the universal group that's what it means local group local group cannot local group only join under the local group under local group but it cannot join the universal it cannot join on the global that's what it means that means this is this why i said global group can go with universal universal can go with the local but local cannot go with like in a reverse mode that's what it means now we're going to see here so global group why you need to create a global group say for example if you have a only think about you don't have nothing i, I have here four things right i have here four things right think about it, you don't have nothing you just have only one domain which is els.com you can have multiple domain controller that's a different story but only one domain which is you have only this one exist if you have this one exist that means if you have a global group So local group so the what does it mean that means this local group only for this domain only for this domain right so if you have a sub domain so if you have a if you have this only one domain in that case it doesn't matter you have local or you have global or you have universal it doesn't matter all of them can work with any domain controller it can move any domain controller inside your domain inside your domain it doesn't matter but if you have a subdomain like this ls.com then us.els.com or ca.els.com or you can say google.com us.google.com asia.google.com so that means if you have a subdomain in that case this security group scope is matter if you have only one domain with multiple domain controllers just only one domain in that case it's not matter what groups you uh, which scope you use for your groups it doesn't matter because all of them is going to work but if you have a sub domain like this then it's matter matter means this local group can work only here it cannot work this sub it cannot also work this sub and this okay this local group Oof. this local group created is us.els.com right so this one not gonna be work here this one not gonna be work here this one only work here and this one local 3 is created on ca.els.com so it can be work only here it cannot work here it cannot also work here that's what it means so global group, what is the benefit of global group? The benefit of global group is um, this global group, this global group can work. If you create a global group here, global, see here, global group one. So global group one can work this. You created maybe global group here. So you created a global group. You created a global group on your main domain, right? Here. So this global group can work your subdomain here is the world can work subdomain here or if you have multiple sub any, any sub any sub under this main domain it can work i'm uh, sorry under this forest and uh, but same domain with under for one forest same domain right els.com but this is a subdomain right 
So main domain, if you have a, uh, sorry, uh, global, sorry, global group, global group, sorry, global group. So this global group can work here, this global group can work here on the same domain, but this global group cannot work with different domain. You see here, this is syst.com. For example, google.com and facebook.com, but all of them is under google.com. If Google, if Google occur, uh, Facebook, if they buy Facebook, then Google gonna use as a forest, Google gonna use google.com as their forest, but domain google.com and separate domain is facebook.com, right? So they can make some relationship here through the forest relationship. So under one forest, if you have a multiple domain, under one forest, domain is different, right? completely do different domain. In that case, your global group not gonna work here. You see, that's why global group one has a cross mark here. But if you have a universal group created here, it doesn't matter what domain is it, it is. It's gonna work the same domain, subdomain, and also it's gonna work different domain, different domain under the forest. As long as if you have a multiple different different types of domain, say sys.com, google.com, yahoo.com, facebook.com, motorola.com, whatever the .com is different different domain under one forest. In that case, universal group gonna work with all of them. So, and then you see here. So in here, I'm trying to show you if, you have a, uh, see, you have a main domain is ELS, subdomain us.ELS and ca.ELS. So you have a folder, HR share is in your ca.ELS.com, right? In that domain, subdomain. In that subdomain, in that subdomain, you have a local group, right? So if you want to provide whoever is belongs to, Whoever is belongs to global group one, if he wants to say, for example, here, here is a here is a global group, right? This global group is was here. That means it can work here. That means it's working here, right? So now you are trying to give them permission, right? So you are trying to give them permissions to this folder. But how you can? You, do you think you can add directly here? No because there is a some like groups policy, how groups work. So you have to follow the how groups work, that policy. So you have to make the global group, you have to make a member of, this global group, you have to make a member of this local group. And then what, the one I explained here, the one I explained here, so you have to make this local group is a member of this group, is a member of the local group, right? So that's how now this one will have this power, right? So that means whatever the users, if you say user one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, up to 50, 50 users is here, then all 50 users will have access now here. Maybe in maybe in the local group there is a 10 user and on the global group there is a 50 users, right? So you cannot directly add here. So how you can add it? You can you can make a member of this local group. The global group you can make member of this local group. Then all fifty users will have access on here. Like whoever is belongs to global group. That's what I explained here. And then this one, I said you have a universal group, right? So you have a universal group one. And you have a, a global group, global group, global group three. So if you want to provide access on this share to your universal group, what do you have to do? So the universal group, you, have, you can have a global group one, global group two, global group three. If you want to have all people, say here's 10 people, here's 10 people, here's 10 people, total 30 people you have, two different, three different, uh, global group, right? Three different global groups. So all 30 people you wants to have access 
He wants to provide access here. Not only that, he wants to provide, here is a global uh, universal group, there is another 10 users. So total 40 users, he wants to provide access to this. So what are you going to do? So in here, you can add all three in, in the universal group and then add the universal group here. So if you add this universal group one here, that means in here, those are the member, right? You see, based on this, based on this, they are the member already here. So you don't need to add here again and again, again, again. So if you add this one here, automatically all of them will be here, right? So all 40 will be, will have access on this share. That's what it's mean. So here is some um, group scope. Here's some gr group scope. You can change the AD group scope or type. So you can convert global security group to the universal group, not part. Okay, I will explain this one, but before we do that, So I'll show you exactly this and practically. So that's why I created two, two users, uh, two, two groups, universal one, universal two, domain local one, domain local two, domain global one, global two. So I said global one or two can be member of each other, right? So if I go properties, I think I already added one. Okay, I'm going to do, uh, remove it, yes. Okay, so global one can be member of global two because it's a global group, right? It's not actually a global, name can be different like X, Y, Z and A, B, C, D. But for understanding, because I don't have any name, basically I should have something named here like this. And then it's gonna be global group, right? But I don't have like this, so that's why I'm just using So um, I'll show you a go global group two. You see this is a global security and member of member of nothing here, right? So we can make it happen. How? Say for example, I'm going to add global two is a member of this, right? So right click properties member. Member and member of. Member means global group two is a member of global group one. That means what? Add, add it here, you're gonna see. <clears throat> so global group two, I'm going to add, right? Okay, and okay. So now global group two added as a member in side of global one, right? Okay. Now, if you go glo global group two, then you're gonna see of members is nothing, but of this, that means global group one, global group two is the member of, global two is the member of global group one. So global group two is the member of global two one. That's what is proof. Right? If you go global one, you're gonna see it's a member, right? It's a member. That means what? So global global group two is the member of global group one, right? So that means what? If you look at in here, this is this this this, this is what I prove. Now let's see. I said universal cannot be a member of global group. Universal cannot be a, sorry, universal cannot be a member. Of this group. Let's see, try to add. Let's go. This is the universal one, right? So any one of them. So go properties, member, and add universal one. U N I B E R S L universal. If you check it, see, even though it's not showing, you cannot do that. You cannot do that. But if you go universal, go to the properties. 
So this year, universal two is the member. If you have a multiple universal, multiple universal, you can join under the universal. But universal cannot be joined on global. Global can be joined on universal. So that's what I'm doing now, add global. Sorry, global, you see global, anyone you can add. So global one is this group member. Now you see universal one has a global one and global one has a global two. That means global one, global two now is the member of universal. You added only global one, right? But you remember we added global two in here. So since global two is here and he, this one is here, that means universal now have all both of them. It's not showing here, but actually it has the same. Member of is nothing, right? Apply, okay. Now, if you go to the global group and check the member of, member of, you see member of universal one. Now, we're gonna try domain local one to add here. Right click, properties, and you can see member. Try to add domain local group. Domain local, right? Just check it. You cannot check it. Why? Because local group cannot be add on global. Even though we're gonna try here, look, domain local group cannot be added on the universal based on our this description. Right? It cannot be add here. It cannot even it cannot be add here. So we already tried this one, it's not working. Now we're gonna try this one here. On the universal, go, uh, go to the properties, member, try to add it. Add the domain local. Cannot get it. Even though if you type the same one, say for example, you're typing exactly one this one right exactly this one i'm just copying this one okay add here add you cannot do that see you cannot do that so it's not gonna work out but if you want to add here anything go to the properties and go to the members if you want, so on the domain local, you can add group or, or you can add universal, whatever, universal or group, anything you can add on the local, right? Uh, dom domain local. So try with global first, GLO, GL global. I'm not gonna add, but I will show you just, you see, I'm, a, I'm able to do that. Or if I want to add universal, universal, check, if I add universal one, now I can get all of them. How? Because universal one is gonna be now member of this, right? And also universal one has universal two, and then also universal one has global group one, and global one has the global two, that is everything I have here. So if you add this group to any anywhere, all these people who is belongs to this group, they will member. All these people who is belongs to this group, they will have access. So this is the process. This is the way you can have add a groups, add a members. Now this one, you can convert global group, security group to a universal if group is not a part of another global group. What does it mean? You can convert global security group. So you, you, you will be able to convert it to a universal group, but if it is not a part of another global group, that means this one, global group two, right? So global group two, so global group two, if you right click on it properties, and if see this a member of this, right? But if you wants to, if you wants to convert it, go to the properties, 
convert to universal apply what does it say what 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 does it say it said like the following active directory domain service error occurred a global group cannot have a universal group as a member because it's already a member of another global group global group number two is already member of this group right so it cannot you cannot convert this to universal but if you go here properties member of it's a member of universal group not a global group so in that case you can say okay universal apply and okay you see this one possible these are not possible so that means we prove this this rules now you can convert a domain local group into a universal one domain local group into universal one if another domain local group is not added to the list of its members so you can convert domain local group to a universal let's see domain local group right so domain local group properties member of so this domain local group 2 is already member of another domain local group right so you cannot convert it go to general and go to universal apply okay actually domain apply okay this one properties general universal okay you cannot this one why if you look at here this one is a member this one has a member if you have a member not member of if you have some member here it's a domain local too right I'm going to actually remove this one. So this one you cannot convert it because it has already member this one. So if you go general and try to convert it, you cannot do that. But from the universal group, properties member it has a member it is member of nothing member if you go to global group also you cannot do that whenever you have some members so if you doesn't have any kind of members go to the properties member delete all this member remove it universal remove it apply okay now try to convert it's, it it doesn't have anything it doesn't have anything if you go now general global now it's here you can convert global yes apply if you want universal apply so if you have a universal you can go global or local but if you have a global you cannot go for domain local only you have option to come back to universal so easily you can convert universal group to global, global group to universal group, existing one. But the requirement is if you have nothing a member of, if you have some member of, then you have to think about this, these rules. So that's all for today. And I hope you guys enjoy. And if you like this video, please, um big give big thumbs up and uh, so make some comments which will um encourage me to make more video for you guys and i hope you enjoyed and also if you think this this video is helpful for you please share with your friends and family in your co-worker and if you're new in my channel please don't forget to subscribe thank you thanks for watching